live. Excellent. All Hello right. out there. Hello, everybody. Here we are at Conestoga College, getting ready to get into what the game design program here has to offer. What they've been working on all year, the capstone projects, finally to be showing them off here at the eSports Hub. I'm yes. joined by Professor Eric right here, and he's going to guide us through it. I can't join because I'm part of one of the teams. Yeah. I got to go get ready with my team, and we'll just let Eric cruise us through. I'll see you guys later. Thank you very much, Owen. You go get ready. I gotta go get ready. Get ready. All right, we are here with Team Crossy Blades. Uh, Team Cross Blades are going to talk about their lovely game. Um, feel free to boot it up. Let's get started. Sure. Woo! Woo! Yeah, yeah get a hype. Yeah. Yeah. Am I sharing the screen already? Yep. Yeah. You just got to launch it. Yeah, it's right here. Um, so our game is. Oh yeah. There you so go. our game is a multiplayer battle arena game. Uh, I got really inspired by the really big hype of Elden Ring and Dark Souls games because I'm an uh, invader, so. <laughs> and I really liked the PvP about that game, but one of the things that I didn't like was how laggy it was because the not coding things, what, whatever. So I decided to just make, take m make my own multiplayer arena game as the capstone, uh, taking that as an inspiration. Yeah. So that's basically what it is. It's just a local multiplayer, so you don't have any kind of uh, net coding involved in it, so it's just couch, couch plug and play and Good old fun. So um, yeah. Uh, um, so, sorry, what's your name and what's your oh, uh, position on this team? I forgot to present myself. But, yep. yeah, I am Rafael. Uh, I was the team lead for the project. I worked mostly on coding the whole thing and helping everyone do, uh, do and know what to do and how to do whatever they needed to. Okay. I was basically trying to lead the team and make the project come up. Excellent. Well, yeah. let's start it up. So, um, this is the menu screen. Um, we had currently two maps that you can choose to play as at. Uh, we also added a control scheme for the game, a control screen, so you can see all the moves that you can do and yep. how, to, how to play. A uh, small credit scene where you can see who, who made the game. Um, and uh, you can just choose the... Let's see, dual towers. Load dual it up. towers, okay. Yeah, load it up. So All right, join in, team. So, okay, Let's so who characters. will... I'm, uh, since I'm talking, I'm not going to play. Yeah. So uh, we are allowed to play as four different characters. You can play as the same character as someone else. There is not a, not a big deal. Uh, just play as you want. And once you can, everyone's ready and selected their characters, they can press start to play the match. And right it goes. Excellent. Uh, yeah. So I'm here with uh, one of the developers, uh, Dennis. Me. Uh, what was uh, your uh, job on this uh, game? Play the game, please. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm Dennis. Uh, I work on the level design the most. So uh, me and Nick, we did the level design for the dual towers and the Coliseum. Uh, he made like the uh, the the, ma the arena for the. the all the the dual towers for the coliseum i made like kind of everything and you're gonna Excellent. see after but like this he made this and i made like the environment the the flag you can see like the flag they have uh, clothes it looks really good cool uh all the the, the torches the gargoyles nick made it it looks really good they have vfx in the eyes uh, yeah. raniel made it it looks amazing he's really good in vfx hire him please <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, the, it's a huge arena, and after one minute you know, playing the arena, you're going to see something changing. Uh, some parts of the bridge is going to fall, so you need to jump to the other side. If you just fall, you just die. So it's oh. going to be like, you need to... Don't it, fall. It, yeah, don't fall. <laughs> so it, it's like, hey, see, you have like this part of the bridge, it's already like fall. That. Yeah, I got tripped up by that playing it earlier. I ended up <laughs> falling into the pit and dying, and it was... Uh, <laughs> A very surprising experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't expect for that. And then the bridge falls and you're like, oh, yeah. I'm probably going to die. So yeah, it's a lot of fun multiplayer. Combat. Yeah, it's a fun. Here, can we, uh, Agle? Hi, yes, my name is Agle. And I was creating uh, 3D models, the characters mainly. I made them how they look. Cool. I also uh, was responsible for animations. I personally did the Rogue and Knight. <laughs> Rainiel took care of Monk and Berserk, her character animations. What's your favorite character in the game? My favorite is Rogue. Rogue, nice. <laughs> yes, you can tell, yeah. <laughs> probably. What, uh, um, what type of uh, combat did you style their moveset off of? Uh, well, just us regular Rogue style. Okay. So it's quick. Quick? Uh, it's... Um, it doesn't do much damage, but it's it the it's hard to catch her. It's right. hard to foresee her moves. Yeah. So who was the berserker? 
I was playing the Berserker. Just oh, yeah. great, great work. Yeah. Who, who are you? Um, I'm Nick Danen. I, uh, I worked like, uh, I worked with, uh, I worked with the team on like level design and I was kind of the head, uh, move set designer and implementer for the game. Cool. Um, my favorite character is probably the knight. I, I like put the most into their move set personally. Yeah. Um, a lot of the other team like helped with some of the ideas for the other characters, but the knight's kind of my baby. Excellent. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, Salem? Hello. Hello. Um, I'm Salem. I was playing the rogue. Uh, I worked with the team to just do a lot of the textures, the dual towers I did the textures for on Nyx. Wonderful models. Um, and I also helped with the weapon textures as well. Would you say the rogue is your favorite character? Actually, it's the monk. The monk, <laughs> nice. Yeah. I uh, I really love the VFX for the monk. Yeah. And um, I'm just not a huge fan of uh, long distance fighters. That's just right. not my play style. Um, but honestly, playing her, it's like very fluid. It's very fun. Yeah. I enjoy it quite a bit. Good. Yeah. Excellent. Um, thank you, Salem. Uh, pass it over to Raniel. So hello everyone, my name is Renio. I was the character designer, animator, and VFX artist of the game. Cool. And my favorite character is the monk. He was my baby. I worked so much on his VFX. It was really fun to do it. Awesome. Yeah, no, the monk's an amazing character. Uh, no one has said that their favorite character is the barbarian, which is my favorite <laughs> character. How? Yeah, yeah. The Berserker, yeah, the big powerful guy with the, the giant sword. How can you go wrong, right? The most power. Yeah, seems to be, seems just wins the game. Wins. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, thank you, Raniel. Uh, uh, yeah, just ma I wanted to mention that all the UI art and splash cards, all these, it also was my job. Yeah, great job. Thank you. Ethan. Hello. Hello. My name is Ethan, and I would say I was the generalist of okay. the group, so I did like small bits of parts of like some of the departments. So I did uh, some UI, um, mainly, mainly of like the different buttons. And I did a lot of like the documentation cool. for, um, what's, the, uh, for the what, what's your favorite level? Um, I would say the dual towers is my favorite dual towers? level. Yeah. I really like the um, environment and of how it looks and everything. Yeah, there's it's got a strong sense of mood to it, mm -hmm. which I really appreciate. And the kind of like the bright, warm colors contrast with the very dark, cool colors. It does. Definitely sense that kind of vibe. Um, I would say that my favorite character would be um, would be the rogue. Mm -hmm. I enjoy playing more of the uh, stealth and quick characters when right. it comes to video games. And I, I also helped with like the uh, with the move set a bit with the rogue, so it's a bit more of an attachment a bit. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, great work, team. Uh, it's an amazing game. It's a ton of fun to play. Uh, does anyone have any closing uh, remarks before uh, we let you? Can I reopen something back in the menu? Yeah, sure. Okay, hold on. Oh, we got a surprise. Um, I don't know what it is. Where, where's Where's the folder for it? I forgot where the folder is. Uh, oh, the game design. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so uh, we had a silly idea at the beginning of development that someone gave, we we're trying to f think of features to put in. Right. And someone threw the, oh, put googly eyes on them. And we're like, you know what? I'm going to do that. All right. So I did that. So I implemented a Google Eyes cheat code, if you press G, where it goes <laughs> into crossy <laughs> blades and the googly eyes show up. And now if you play the game, All the everyone characters. select the character. Let's see. Select a different, yeah, so everyone can see. Yeah, Press start. And characters. if you rotate the camera, you're going <laughs> to see that all of them have googly <laughs> eyes. And it's just silly old fun. The too, too, and they? the gargoyles also have oh, googly perfect. eyes. <laughs> oh, I love it. So, so they have it. I, I don't know if it's easy to see. Yeah, <laughs> word out there, when you're making <laughs> games, always add secrets to your games. That's <laughs> the most important part about it. Those little yeah. things make it truly fun. Yeah, there you go. You can see on the, the oh, rogue screen that so it, it has googly eyes. <laughs> 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 it's silly old fun. I love it. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank yeah. you very much, Team Crossy thank Blades. You. <laughs> <laughs> Good work this year. Amazing game. And uh, thank you very much for showing it off. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. <laughs>
Pronto. Excellent. Welcome back. Uh, we're here with uh, Monstrum Mysterium. Welcome, Monstrum Mysterium team. If you want to introduce yourselves and talk about the parts that you worked on this project. Sure. Uh, my name is Briar Lee. Uh, I was the uh, lead production manager, the uh, UI designer, environment designer, editor of the dialogue, and kind of uh, impromptu UX lead. Uh, what else did I do? Texture painting. Nice. Uh, is that it? Is that all that I did? Sure. Well, yeah, that was production management. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> um, who's that? Fast enough. Shad? Oh. Uh, hello, my name is Shad, and um, I mainly worked on the character design, 2D assets, and some story writing as well. Excellent. My name is Kieran. I made Kieran? the old version of uh, character dialogue. I did the marketing material, and I also play the trash gremlin. <laughs> Hi, my name is Blade. Uh, I did a lot of different stuff with this project. I started with uh, dialogue and like narrative design, uh, designing like the you know the story. Um, started with that. Um, quickly moved over to like animations and VFX, uh, all of the sound design. I did voice acting for two of them, and then implemented all of the other uh, voice lines. Um, Briar also voiced Fallon. I did um, Jack and uh, Marax, and Brandon also helped with the caretaker. Um, so yeah, lots of different stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I'm Brandon. Uh, I voiced the caretaker, but primarily what I did was I was the sole programmer. Uh, spent a lot of my focus on the character customization and things like that. Yeah, this is um, one of the most robust character customizers I've seen come <laughs> out of a thank you come out of our program. So great job on that. Um, I did the models for the monster characters as they show up in game as well as many of the environmental assets that you see. So all the plants and some of the like uh, sort of generic door assets and things like that were done by me. Those those uh, walls you can see where they've got the panels that kind of stuff. Cool. Thank you, Brandon. Hi, my name is Katie, and I did some character design alongside with the character customization models and the UI design for it. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, Katie. 
Uh, do you mind, uh, will someone talk a little bit about the character customizer uh, quick? Oh, yeah, sure. sure. Um, so we wanted to create a character customization module that was uh, kind of different than what the standard that we see. I'm really passionate about character customization. That was mm -hmm. like one of the main things that I wanted to work on on this project. Uh, we wanted something that wasn't just like, okay, you're going to pick like the male body or the female body and then y here you go. <laughs> um, and those are your, your two options and then you're going to go from there. So instead what we did was we did... Um, shape keys and sliders to try and make something that was a little bit more, um, I don't know, inclusive. Yeah. Um, we wanted to do more with it, but you know, there's always, there's limitations to what can be done on a student project. Yeah. Um, but I am really proud of what we managed to do. We have um, a slider for the body that gives kind of a more masculine versus feminine frame. Uh, we have a chest slider, so you can have big kahongas if you want, or a completely flat chest. Um, and then a face slider to be like a more feminine versus masculine face. And then of course, this is a monster themed game, so we wanted some opportunities to have some cool monster themed stuff so <laughs> as you can see i've chosen my favorite thing the chicken wings on the yeah. back. um got a few different tails horns stuff like that um i like that the hair on the tail matches the head yeah the uh the the kind of dragon and devil tail match match the skin color whereas the, the 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 dog tail matches the hair color cool um this was kind of uh one of our earliest things, obviously, was setting up the character customization. Um, I think at this point in the project, it's something we kind of take for granted because we did it so early on. But looking back on it, it's something that I, I'm pretty proud of um, yeah. because I think I think we did accomplish what we what we set out to do with that uh, in terms of you know something innovative and different with the character customization. Oh, it's it's great. Thank you. Uh, Chad, do you want to talk a little bit about doing the character portraits and things like that? Oh yeah, um, so what I wanted to kind of accomplish with each of the character portraits, mm -hmm. um, I wanted to add more emotions, but for now we're sticking to the neutral. I just, uh, I really wanted to try and uh, give the clearest photo and uh, of the design that we have going on here, um, at least from the chest up. Um, my main inspiration to, for the vibes and style I was going for was Pokemon Mystery Dungeon, because uh -huh. that's what I played all the time as a kid, and I really enjoyed it. Um, so um, the characters, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> each of the characters, their backgrounds, they have, uh, their kind of like motif color mm -hmm. to kind of help them contrast and stand out from the rest. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. I made them as detailed and comic booky styled as I could. So Excellent. yeah. Thank you, Chad. Uh, Kate, Katie, uh, what did, where did you come up with the idea for the game? Um, a mix of a few dating simulators. I wanted to be fairly like casual, but I wanted to incorporate the three D element because I, I feel like a lot of dating simulators are two D. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe if you're able to like walk around and it'd be a little bit more unique. Mm -hmm. um, Two games I got the ideas from would be like Yandere Simulator, Yandere, I, I think that's what it's called, and also um, Monster Prom. Oh, so cool. that's where I got it from. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Brandon. Uh, what inspired uh, the monster model designs? A lot of the designs were based on sketches that Enjoying either Shad or Briar had done, but I took quite a few creative liberties with it as I went, mm -hmm. um, basing them off of. A few different things, um, really. I mean, Fallon's was based on uh, sort of like a like dinosaurs mm -hmm. in a lot of ways. A lot of dinosaurs, obviously sharks, things like that. Right. Uh, female bodybuilders. With Jack, I took a few um, a few other liberties as well, and I played around with like paneling, the way that chitin works in Creature Anatomy but also of how you would take that approach of trying to take a <laughs> spider anatomy and trying to do your best to make it look like a person. Right. Hmm. So how would all that work and how anyway. you could set it up that way. Excellent. Thank you, Brandon. Blade, tell me a little bit about the audio design. Um, a lot of the audio design was, it was really, it was really fun, actually. It was, it was a bit of a challenge, uh, getting everything into the game on time and getting all of the, like, every single voice acted line. Um, there were so many lines by the end of it, it was just ridiculous. And a lot of it was, like, uh, brainstorming, like, what that character sounds like. And how do I envision that character sounding and how am I going to create that sound? 
Uh, I think the, the biggest challenges I actually faced in this were less with the sound. Mm -hmm. um, there were a lot of like rigging challenges, trying yeah. to a lot of clipping issues and things like that with the character designer because we were using shape keys, yeah. uh, which meant that all of, all of the different movements and everything had to accommodate that. So it was, right. it was a ton of like tricky weight painting to make sure that there's not as much clipping and that everything looks the way that I want it to in the game. Cool. Thank you very much. Kieran. Yes. Can you tell me a little bit about developing the uh, the marketing aspects of the game? Um, the marketing aspects was definitely something, especially considering making the website, mm -hmm. because I spent a lot of time on a banner that would not work. Uh, but after a while, got that working. It was mostly just like little behind the scenes things, little sneak peeks about stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. But other than that, there's not really much that went into it. It was all it was all things like get clips of the game, screenshots, making a custom website for it was actually quite fun. Cool. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, no, this is an excellent game. Uh, it's an amazing looking dating game. Uh, definitely one of the more unique projects we've had. So great work, team. It's, it's uh, amazing to see the hard work you put into it. Um, any closing remarks? Kieran? Trash Goblin is the best character. <laughs> of course. You can't, can't go wrong. Yeah, you can't go wrong with the Trash Goblin. Yeah, I, I can talk about it a little bit. Sure. Um, I was writing uh, part of Jack's story, and at one point you're supposed to go through the garbage cans, um, and you're supposed to be like collecting stuff from it. It came from like an early concept of the game where we were going to have the different players or the different characters react to different choices that you make right. based on like stats that you had. So like digging through the garbage would make you like smelly. Some characters like that, some characters don't. Sure. Um, but anyways, that didn't end up happening. Um, so with that, I kind of was like, well, it would be kind of more fun if there was like something unique about this garbage can. And I was trying to steer away from Oscar, but it's Oscar. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> well, he is um, but yeah, it just it just kind of came out of the blue and I think that's where a lot of the fun things in this project happen. We're like, "Yeah, what if I just did this?" Like yeah. like the click effect. I was just kind of messing around and I, I did put a lot of work into like the the shader to try and get her like tune style done. <laughs> right. Yeah, no, it, it's a neat effect and I think your game has a very cohesive sense of style. So good job, team. Great work. Uh, Monster Mysterium. Good job. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> Hold on. Hold. Excellent. Welcome back. Here we are with Team Catnobi uh, to talk about their lovely, uh, well, cat-based uh, uh, action game. So Catnobi so is a co-op uh, shoot-em-up game based on Nazi zombies and Left 4 Dead. That's Excellent. It. So let's play right now. Sure. Here. I'll take that. What's your name? Oh, I'm Carlos, by the way. What did you do yeah. on the project? Uh, I was 
at first I started with like the programming, mm -hmm. but then Ethan took over, did a great job, yep. and then I switched over to uh, technical art and VFX. Excellent, cool. Thank you, Carlos. Who do um, we have here? Um, so my name is Julian. Um, I was part of the very early UI design. Yep. Um, since then, some of the um, elements have changed, um, but a lot of the menus, um, the base menus, and you know the UI, in-game UI, um, was uh, a bit of my work. And then uh, I slowly switched over to uh, marketing uh, manager, and uh, basically felt that my work there was better, better suited. Cool. Um, so yeah, that was my my job for the rest of this game. Right, thank you, Julian. Hi, I'm Zaya. I did the character models and yeah. um, animations for those models. Excellent. Thank you, Zaya. Uh, hi, I'm Will. I did a lot of different things. Um, I did the main shader for the game, uh, some of the VFX as well. I designed all of the guns and modeled them. Cool. And that's about it. A little bit of programming here. <laughs> and audio, yes. Hello, my name's Ethan. I was the lead programmer of this project. I basically did most of the main mechanics and just building up the base systems of the game. Um, we started off kind of as a stealth game. Right. Where you had to rescue your Tadnobi friend who was captured by these rat samurais. But we ended up taking a different turn after we played one game of Left 4 Dead, and Eric <laughs> gave us a uh, gave us a new idea, and we were like, "Oh, that's way better." And this is the game we have right now. Yeah, excellent. Which sometimes, you know, you don't necessarily always want to pivot in the middle of development, but, but sometimes a pivot is what you need to kind of like realign what you're trying to build and what you're working towards. Definitely a good decision, I want to say. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Carlos, uh, what would you say is the kind of like uh, the graphical design that you uh, kind of based well, the game off of? I was going for like 3D, like um, toon shader, cartoonish kind of vibe, you know? Cool. And we kind of did that. Uh, uh, I kind of based the game off like uh, Naruto and yeah. stuff because I was watching a lot during the summer. Sure thing. And so it was supposed to be like ninjas and stuff, right? Yeah. But then we gave them all like Uzis and like <laughs> <laughs> so. So we kind of, you know, strayed away from that. But. Overall, like it's supposed to be like a cute, cutesy vibe, you know. Yeah. No, nope, not much blood and gore, even though there's like little bit hearts when you shoot them. But yeah, it's not really blood, but it's still pretty cool, you know. Yeah. What's your favorite weapon? Um, my favorite weapon. Yeah. And why is it the firework launcher? <laughs> Uh, well, just like the explosions and stuff, yeah, you know. Of course. The more chaos, the better. Right? Excellent. Yeah, yeah, I agree. <laughs> All right, hop back in there. Let's see oh, some yeah, more yeah. action. Grab a nice uh, firework launcher. Excellent. Oh, and the bomb also. The bomb was pretty cool. The bomb is pretty cool. It took cool. a while to make, but I could just throw like five at a time and like just blow the whole map up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, look at those explosions. Okay, yeah. <laughs> They're a bit off uh, timing, but mm -hmm. th that can be fixed later. Oh, for they sure. They caught a little bit off short, but yeah. Yeah. Just update it after release. Exactly, exactly. That's how, that's exactly. how it works. But overall, pretty happy with the, the finished product, you know? Excellent. Yeah, no, it's an amazing game. Thank you, Carlos. Uh, Julian. Uh, so what were some of the difficulties in doing UI design for this game? Um, I would say a lot like trying to design it towards what the game was, um, the feel of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I think just trying to make sure that it stays in, in theme. Um, right. And then also making sure that um, you know you collaborate with all the other dev team members to make sure that you know it's it is staying in theme and it is you know um, I, I would say making sure that the the dimensions of everything are correct and all right. the the nitty gritty of the technical side of things cool. um, but yeah it was a lot of fun what's your favorite weapon um, I would say I have to say the rocket launcher firework yeah 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 <laughs> big boom big boom <laughs> Zaya, how do you feel about animating models? Uh, I feel uh, better now than I did before this project oh, because, that's good. yeah, um, because with this project I learned uh, Unity layers. So instead of like making like 40 different animations for right. like each one, so I could just make like um, four separate animations and then layer them, and they would look better. There you go. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Zaya. Will. 
Oh boy. You did the soundtrack for this. I game. did do the soundtrack. For it this is game. bananas. <laughs> yes. What was your inspiration for the sounds and sound design? <laughs> Honestly, not a whole lot. Just no? plucking around. Um, I like making music on the side, just in general. Right. I do a lot more of like metal side of things. Yes. And so I wanted to uh, just continue going into a foray into that. And I took some inspiration from Doom yeah. for some of the songs. Uh, some specific parts, certain riffs are yeah. very Doom. Yeah, no, uh, it's, you, you definitely had the soundtrack has the vibe of uh, similar to Doom, where it's like, what if we just took the riff, tweak them a little bit, and then uh, put a different yeah. beat on it? Yeah, and that's a different song, right? Yeah, after doing a few covers, I was like, oh, I see a pattern here. <laughs> I'm going to use this for myself. Yeah. And so I did that, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Uh, my favorite song is the one you get to hear the least because it only plays on the win or loss screen. Right. And it's it's super cool. It's got a bunch of brass and it, it's way longer than it should be and it lasts like on that screen for like two seconds. Excellent. Which is really fun. Excellent. Thank you, Will. Oh, my favorite weapon is. Oh yeah, your weape. Sorry. It's a ask. submachine gun. Submachine the, the gun. The KP5 SD. Very yeah. fun. Yeah. I love the giant. Uh, yeah, the cartridges, right? They yeah. fly out of it. Oh, they're going the wrong way, too. Well, why not? <laughs> yeah, what's your favorite weapon? Uh, my favorite weapon Sorry. was uh, the shotgun. Yeah. Because when you reload it, um, if you can, after he finishes. Oh, it, what, it splits the... Oh, well, yeah, it splits open, like the barrels yeah. split like that, and then they come out, and it's nice. Cool. Yeah. Breach break shotgun. You done? And uh, something I learned while doing on the project was how to really like build up a system from the ground. Because in p the past two years, I haven't really done that. I've kind of mm -hmm. just made little systems, and like learning how to build up a system from the ground up, like uh, the weapon system, mm -hmm. was really interesting. And how to get like the switching and reloading really down to a T, getting hit, move, the timing and stuff. <laughs> right. And then, yeah, it was like it was just a lot of fun on this project. There's a lot of ups and downs, yep. but we got it. We got it in the end, and that's what matters. I think so. I, uh, in the last couple of weeks, it really came together, coalesced into a very interesting, neat-looking game. So good work. Good job, team. Uh, any final remarks before we let you go? Uh, love game design, you know? Yeah. Go, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> My favorite weapon is the shotgun. Oh, yeah, your favorite weapon is the shotgun as well. Yeah, the breech loading shotgun. All right. Well, great work, Team Catnobi. Amazing game. Tons of fun to play. And, uh, yeah, excellent job. Thank you. Excellent. Here we are with Team Speedlust to talk about their futuristic racing game. Uh, let's let's get in there. Start it up. Uh, first off, we have 
Hello everyone, my name is Rohan. Uh, I'm the team lead and I was also the programmer and the technical artist of the of the team. I did a bunch of programming like uh, coding the ships and the AI ships. I also did the shaders for the game and the VFX. Excellent. Thank you, Rohan. Next up we have... Uh, I'm Solomon Talbot. Uh, I was the lead level designer. Um, I created the uh, track and did the map layout of the buildings, the cranes, um, all the stuff around the map that you know, sets up the uh, set pieces so the player never gets bored. Excellent. Thank you, Solomon. Hi, this is Vicky. I worked on the ship models and the buildings and uh, I also made some props for the tracks. And, Excellent. Uh, there's also like a, a blimp. A blimp? Yeah. yeah. There's also a blimp. Yeah. It wouldn't be a race without a blimp. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you, Vicky. I'm I'm Josh. Hey, Josh. Uh, I did the sounds, uh, designing and implementing, and I also did the music. Excellent. Thank you. A few bug fixes. Of course. Everyone's fixing bugs. And last but most certainly not least. Uh, yeah, I'm Dylan. Uh, so I wore a lot of hats during the project. Uh, at the start, I worked on a lot of programming, uh, and then I went to uh, UI. Uh, I did a little bit of modeling, not much of it ended up in the game, but a few set mm -hmm. pieces here and there. Um, but yeah, most recently I've been working on the uh, UI, trying to get that to fit with the theme of the game. Right. So, so how was uh, building the uh, the start screen and like kind of creating that kind of like visual, the first big visual appeal that you see when you hit the game? Yeah. So I took a lot of inspiration from games like uh, like Hot Wheels Unleashed, um, Red Out 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I looked at a lot of like other racing games uh, and just kind of tried to emulate the same kind of feel. Right. Um, and I, I think it could use a little more work, but I'm happy with where it is now, especially the, the in-game UI was especially interesting because with racing games you want to keep it minimal. Right. Um, so it took a lot not to go overboard with it. Of course. I mean, you got to have a little bit of restraint. You know, yeah. you see how far you can go, push it to the edge, and then come back a little bit, right? Yeah, exactly. Excellent. Yeah, no, this game has a strong sense of speed. Uh, so, Rohan, what did you do to make it so that uh, it looks so fast? Um, we added a lot of uh, visuals to the game, like uh, when you are taking a boost, the fuel FOV changes. Right. There's like um, it, uh, the blurs on the edge of the screens, and there's the speed lines. Uh, and your speedometer and goes the speedometer up. goes up very fast. It's such an extreme number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the goal of the game is to be blip. fastest racer. So, yeah. Cool. Thank you, Ron. Solomon, what inspired the level design? Uh, I don't know. From the beginning, the brief was always just an abandoned city. Right. Um, I don't know if we ever had a envision for the story or not, mm -hmm. but. We just ran with the uh, abandoned city location and then just built the track around that. You know, tipped over buildings, right. uh, broken cranes, broken pieces of road, uh, vines going up the building, stuff yeah. like that. I love the the overgrowing vines. They definitely give it the sense of like you know the, the nature is retaking the city yeah, as exactly, it crumbles back exactly. into the ground. And then they built a racetrack on top. Yeah, of it. yeah. Obviously. I don't know the story implications of that, but uh, it's fun to think about. Yeah, we're just gonna run with it. Yeah, why yeah. not? Hey, the fireworks. Yeah. Hey, Vicky, what uh, what inspired your uh, uh, ship designs? Uh, for the first ship, I just, you know, uh, made it like a Batwing first, but then it didn't work out, and we had to, like, make changes to the ship to do better fit the game. Right. And the second one, it's actually a uh, X-Wing at first. Oh, cool. <laughs> and then of course. we had to, like, because it's so big and it's mm -hmm. wide, so we need to, like, make some changes to better fit the game. And the last ship, it was Dylan's idea actually, like a hovercopter. Yeah. So, and that's my favorite ship too. The VO2L helicopter? Yeah, that's my favorite ship. It's green too, yeah. so that means it's my favorite ship. <laughs> Obviously. Oh, Josh, what inspired uh, the sound design and the music in this game? Well, the sound design was uh, pretty simple. I just uh, made sounds with my mouth and was like, oh, does this sound like something I should make into a real sound? And then I went from there. Oh, perfect. Uh, with music, it was a little more complicated. I, I didn't have a very like firm, specific inspiration, mm -hmm. but just kind of ideas. A lot of like, not just rock, but mostly rock sure. stuff. Um, a little bit of more futuristic, techn yeah. technological rock. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that makes a lot of sense. 
Yeah, no, I think the soundtrack for your game is awesome and it fits the kind of theme and feel well. It, it, it's an amazing looking game. It fits in well with the kind of like futuristic racing style games. Uh, so what kind of futuristic racers inspired you for this game? Red Out. Red Out? Yeah, of Red, course. for sure. Um, Excellent. Personally, mostly just Red Out. <laughs> mostly Red Out, yeah. yeah. Uh, Dylan? What's up? <laughs> <laughs> you took me off guard there, sorry. No, no problem. Uh, what game, uh, what futuristic racing games inspired you for this one? Um, so for me, uh, there was this game called uh, Warp Drive. Yeah. Uh, I never actually uh, played it, but I watched a lot of videos when I realized I was working with, uh, on this project. Mm -hmm. uh, and I went back to that a lot throughout the development process uh, just to get uh, inspiration. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, again, right out. Red Out is something we all went to multiple times, so, right. yeah. What happened to the waterfall? It's hidden somewhere. It's hidden? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I miss the waterfall. Yeah. <laughs> Future? So what do the lightning bolt icons do? Uh, so right now, uh, they are boost multipliers. Okay. So um, you can see an I like a number above the boost right. uh, when you're coming up to it. Every time you get one of the... Uh, multipliers, it increases mm -hmm. how fast, like, like it's 60% right now. So if you were to collect another one, it would be at 80%. Gotcha. Uh, and it consumes that uh, upon use. Can you go over 100%? I Does the car don't explode? believe so. Uh, no, the, it's you the future. The, they're made well. Oh, are they? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you sure about that? <laughs> they, they kind of fall apart sometimes, but, yeah. you know. Yeah. Well, uh, Rohan, what was the challenge in... Uh, building AI for uh, a racing game? Uh, it was hard. <laughs> uh, it took me like a couple of weeks to like more than that to make them behave properly. Like at first they were like just bumping into each other. They still do, but right. I kind of improved it um, upon it. And then uh, and, and <laughs> also they were like very, they were like not following the track properly in the beginning. Right. And it was very hard to like get them do that. Yeah, that was like the most hard part for me. Yeah, artificial then, intelligence can yeah. be very tricky. Yeah, also like making them like uh, detect like if there is a ship in ahead of them then uh, like turn and so that they can overtake and that, that was also very tough to do. Cool. All right. Uh, thank you very much. Any uh, closing remarks there team before we let you go? Josh? Game, Game of, of the, the year! <laughs> 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 Thank you very much, Team Speed Lust. Let's give them a hand. Excellent work. <laughs> cool. oh, hold on. All right.
All right, and we're back with uh, Team Cannibal Animals, uh, and you're back. I'm back, yeah. yeah I, back. As if this doesn't hear me talk enough, yeah. this microphone, here I am, yeah, returned. So, Owen, can you tell us a little bit about the game and I'm, what you did on the team? I'm Owen McAndrew. I did a few things. I did some shader work, VFX work for the game. I did some coding for the combat and just kind of helped here and there. Thanks. That's what I did, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Owen. Um, I'm Alexis. I was the team lead and I mainly focused on 3D modeling and texturing. Cool. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Pax. I'm uh, mostly just uh, did the UI stuff and uh, uh, shader, VFX, some of them, and all the 2D assets. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah, look, yeah. I love the shirts. Great work <laughs> on the shirts. <laughs> Thank Looks you. Good. Yeah. <laughs> Still can't believe that. Uh, my name's Carter Medill. I um, did all the sound design and music, as well as most of the marketing. Excellent. Um, yeah. Good work. I'm Hayden Fisher, and this is Cannibal Animals. Um, <laughs> uh, I programmed the game and did a lot of the inner workings, mechanics, and stuff like that, and pretty much put it all together. Cool. Can you, can you tell me? Uh, sorry, here. Let's see that Hayden. Oh yeah. Oh. No, no. Yeah, I know. Can you tell me a little bit, uh, Alexis, Great. of the idea where the um, idea yeah. for the game came from, and uh, um, how you went about designing it? So I I really love cooking games. Yeah. I think they're like the best thing in the world, and I wanted to make one, but um, a lot of the a lot of cooking games are exactly the same. Right. So I wanted to make it crazy and chaotic. So I thought, why not? have the players kill the other players and cook them. Oh, of um, course. So the inspiration is mainly um, kind of like super cutesy animals, but happy tree friends gore. Right, right, right. Because why not? Why not? That's yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah, it's a little bit uh, overcooked mixed with, uh, I guess, Power Stone or Smash Brothers, <laughs> something yeah. along those lines. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's excellent. Good work. <laughs> Thank you. Where did the cute animal designs come from? Um, they're mainly inspired by like, I, I don't want to say it, but Among Us. And, oh. uh, <laughs> <laughs> Among Us and Fall Guys mainly. Sure. I, I wanted to make them little beans. Yeah, 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 they're, yeah. Little, they're all my little. my babies. They look like little peeps. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, Pax, how'd you go about creating the 2D art style for this game? Uh, yeah, mostly just staring at the concept art Alex <laughs> <laughs> made and come up uh, come up with my ideas. And uh, here, this one I like uh, uh, watched a lot of other games. Uh, their slab uh, slab screen, their slab design. Right. And yeah, something yeah. like that. No, it looks excellent. I love the the two D design. It definitely has a cohesive style and feel to it. So great job on yeah. that. Good work. Thank you. Thank you. And Owen. Uh, uh, so you worked on uh, uh, shader work and VFX? Yes, yes yeah. I did. So all the blood particle effects stuff you see, Woo. shader of the game, cell shader, I did all that. We have multiple maps as yeah. well, so there's some more shader work in there. The water in the both the ice map and the mm -hmm. pirate ship map, I did a sh custom shader for that cool. to simulate waves and lighting on it. And yeah, I just did the VFX, steam VFX, blood VFX, there's the chopping VFX. Uh, I think the block VFX right. is in it. I don't know if that made it to this build or not yet, but <laughs> it's in there. It's out it's there in somewhere. There. There's, there's a bunch of VFX I made. I, pretty much every particle was designed by me. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. No, yes. it looks good. I really, I, that snow looks great. Good job. That's funny. That wasn't by me. Oh, well. That one was by Pax. <laughs> oh, that, that, oh, good I, job. I, gotta, yeah. <laughs> I can't steal the spotlight for that one. That snowman's very cute. I like, <laughs> I like the snowman a lot. Look at that blood effects. Oh, yeah. Blood on the snow. Really wanted to make it feel chaotic, you yeah. know, like everything's going in the middle, blood's flying everywhere. It's supposed to look cute, but then <laughs> once you get into the action, the tone changes completely. So, yeah. thank you. Perfect. Thank you. There you go. Come back. Hey, Carter. How'd you go about uh, making choices about the sound design for this game? Um, I kind of just made weird sounds. Yeah, I think I don't know if we implemented it, but there's one where I was pissing to, for like, and it ends up like, right. making like the sizzling sound for like oh. when it's cooking. So like okay. we could just do really weird things, and then it ends up doing that. That's just my favorite part about it. Is you just find <laughs> you do weird ways to do things. You find very creative ways to make sounds. Sure. Yeah, thank you, Carter. <laughs> and then yeah. yeah, good. And Hayden. Yes. 
So what was the difficult part about implementing kind of like a, a, a very uh, systems heavy and very chaotic multiplayer game? Um, you know, I've never done it before and yep. it was pretty chaotic. Yeah. <laughs> um, back when the game was very bare bones though, when I had my little siblings play test it, watching them go around like bat each other up, fighting over like, you can't do that, don't do that. Right. It, uh, it, it drove me to go even crazier with everything in the game. And, uh, yeah. Excellent. What's your favorite character? Um, well, he's actually not here right now, but the penguin's my favorite. The penguin? Oh. He, uh, he has some UV map disease going on right now, but it's, he's going to get fixed. He's going to make it. <laughs> cool. But, uh, yeah. Thank you, Hayden. Who's uh, playing the frog? Man, you are racking up the scores. Is the frog your favorite character, Carter? Yes. <laughs> Is the frog overpowered, Owen? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the frog's the best one. Always yeah. pick frog. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite character? Frog. 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 Of course. Yeah, share the frog. Yeah. It's not mine, though. <laughs> what? No. Wait, who's your favorite character? Um, my favorite character is the... i got to say the corgi. The corgi yeah, is mine, so too. Yeah, yeah. I, I love the corgi. Pax, what's your favorite character? Corgi and the yeah. the bunny. Oh, the bunny. Okay. Nice. Yeah. yeah, the the pink bunny. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the hyena is good. It rounds out the team, really, even if it's not everyone's favorite character. So it's kind of Team Frog versus Team Corgi, I suppose. Yeah. Cool. All right. Uh, any closing remarks, there, Team Cannibal Animals, before we let you go? Do you want to say oh, there you go. All right. Better. Ready? Game of the year. <laughs> Game of the year. <laughs> 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 One day. All right. All right, well, thank, thank you very much, team. Good work. Excellent job. <laughs> cool.
All right, we're here with Team Ants of the Round Table. Uh, why don't you tell us about a, your game a little bit, Mike? So the game is inspired by games like Cuphead and Castle Crashers and a little bit of Bugs Life and other cartoon-based games. Um, so this is like a beta 2. Unfortunately, I couldn't get the latest version working, so oh, this happens. will have to do. It, it just works, you yeah. know? Yeah, no problem, Mike. Um, so, yeah, it, it's a two-player game. I wanted to try out a two-player game because beforehand I've never done it. Right. So maybe I was a little ambitious with it. But so far, it looks pretty good. A lot of... I don't know. Like, any, why don't you ask me some questions? <laughs> I'm getting ahead <laughs> of myself. No, we'll go around. Uh, who else do we have on the team here? So um, this day effects, so mainly I focus on the UI stuff and also uh, the concept apps for the enemy as well. Uh, I also did some uh, real effects stuff and the uh, post uh, processing uh, effect and the fitting modeling as well. Excellent. So, yeah. Thank you, David. And we have, last but not um, least, I'm Nathan, and um, I did the character art and animations. Excellent. Um, I did the sound and particles, but I don't know if it's implemented in this version. No, it um, looks cool. Yeah. All right, thank you, Nathan. So, Mike, uh, you said that you're inspired by games like Cuphead and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, what what about Cuphead kind of inspired you? The two-player co-op element originally, if like we had more time in development and better knowledge of this, like um, the game would have had a lot more challenging elements such as boss fights and mm -hmm. characters that require you to pay attention on timing and that lot. So it's mm -hmm. not just button mashing. Although, that's what it is now. But um, other games, I forgot to mention Hollow Knight's another inspiration, which right. is why they're insects wearing armor in that lot. Mm -hmm. So, you know, insects in a medieval setting. And then, yeah. Excellent. I like the, uh, the kind of bright, cheery color, uh, art style. How did you, where, what brought that about? Um, inspired by cartoons like from Disney and that lot, we mm -hmm. wanted to have a bright, vibrant aesthetic so then when people are watching, it's not just dull, gray stuff. Um, but mainly it's these two guys who were responsible for the art and they did an excellent job with what they had to work with. So, cool. yeah. Thank you, Mike. Sure. Yeah. David. So, uh, what should I say? What, uh, <laughs> tell me about uh, your model work and uh, oh, kind of like uh, general graphics. So, uh, we are thinking something like a uh, simple 3D modeling and something like low polygon, and that's what I make for the uh, 3D game. Cool. For this, for this game. And uh, um, we will struggle to uh, figure out uh, the shader stuff. Right. I made some uh, shader where the grass can move dark and bright, but unfortunately, it doesn't work. So, I just do the animation for the grass and also for the flower as well, so uh, that's what I make. Excellent. But uh, uh, I mean, we make it anyway. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I love the whimsical sense of style, and a lot of the the shaders kind of help with that. And the uh, I love the tweens that you added to a lot of the UI elements and stuff like that. So great work with that team. Nathan, tell me a little bit about your process in creating the uh, animations. Um, well, and what inspired you? Since like this game was inspired by like Cuphead and Castle Crashers, I am. I wanted to make like a cartoony like art style, mm -hmm. so I hand drawn the um, art and I animated it like with simple animations mm -hmm. um, that you would find in cartoons. Cool. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Nate. Uh, Mike, how difficult was it to build uh, like di vary up the enemy sets and like what did you do to make the game feel more dynamic? In what mean? So as so you're like playing, so like as the characters move and things like that, the attacks that add a little bit more uh, visual power or like uh, reactions for the player to see. Well, Nathan had two sets of animations for the knight character. So when you're moving and doing the attack, he lunges forward. But then if you hold still, then he just does an overhead swing. So the idea was to have variation, even though it's, it fun functions the same, it yeah. looks different or gives a different feel. Right. Um, originally, we did have implemented a super mode where it would be like an orb from like Smash Brothers. You would pick it up and it would give you like a rapid attack or cool. like for the archer, you would have a projectile that goes through multiple enemies. Sure. Unfortunately, I couldn't get that working as well. So, yeah, it happens. but yeah, it happens. Um, but the, the mindset was to make sure what players could do mm -hmm. was also what AI could do. Right. So when I had the AI working, the enemy knight would function pretty much how the player knight would, right. except it was controlled by an AI. Because, I don't know, it, some games it's unfair how the AI could do things that the players can't. So right. with this project, I wanted to try having both ends be able to do the same things. Cool. Um, Excellent. 
Great work. Uh, I think it's a neat looking game. Yeah, it shows a lot of promise and a lot of heart. So great job on that team. Uh, do you have any closing remarks before we let you go? Don't get ambitious like I did. Oh, <laughs> no, no. Go for ambition. Swing for the fences. <laughs> no, you did great. Good job, team. Good job, team. Uh, Ants at the round table. Good stuff. <laughs> Woo! Wave completed. Thank you. All right.
Excellent. Welcome back. I'm here with Jasper. He's going to tell you a little bit about his game. Okay, so the game name is Racing Freaks. And cool. The, so the main thing I did is the programming, the physics of the car. And this game contains three levels. Mm -hmm. Every The sole purpose of the game is to start with the checkpoints. We have to complete all the checkpoints to complete the race. Cool. And we have three tracks in it. So basically we get to the end of the track when we complete one race cool. and uh, just like we have 10 checkpoints in one in one track and 13 checkpoints in second track and 16 checkpoints in third track Excellent. and that's how i made it and there will be the another cars with the ai battling with the with our cars so Excellent. that's the main what uh, what games inspired you okay so the games which inspired me was the Asphalt Aid because I'm a huge as Asphalt fan. Okay. And I, I always want to make a car racing game so I made it like that. And if you can see the Asphalt also has some checkpoint stuff. Cool. So I just take inspiration from there. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Cool. Yeah, it, it, I've definitely driven down this stretch of the 401. Yeah, excellent. Uh, so, in addition to asphalt games, uh, any other games? Um, so, inspired? yeah, there are other games. Like the car is inspired from uh, if you guys have played in your childhood the hill climb race, mm -hmm. that mobile little game that the crazy. Like I really love that game in my childhood. So, I made the concept like that. I used the three D models and everything like that, so that it gives me the feel of that you know, my childhood game. Cool. And yeah, that was the inspiration about the 3D models. Mm -hmm. So what's the, the next big feature you want to add to this game? So the next feature I want to add to this game is, uh, to be honest, add more stuff. Like I want to add some power-ups. Mm -hmm. I want to add some more cool, cool tracks. Cool. And personally, which I really like to add, will be will be some cool cars I guess. Cool cars? Yeah. yeah. What's your favorite car? That will be a X5 BM. X5 BM? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Yeah. Any other uh, big things you want to chat about for this game? Uh, not really because it was a solo project so I need to have like work on everything. Right. I faced like some difficulties in the car physics like I have to learn the car physics in two weeks right. so that I can use it in my game. Then I built the car physics on my own and yeah that was the that was the thing which I faced mm -hmm. during this game and cool. yeah when this track when the uh, we are on the seven checkpoint to be honest right now and when the checkpoints will complete we will get on another track okay. and there will be like the finishing UI stuff will be there cool. so yeah I made it like that but in the first track it's like really simple because it just have two cars battling with our car right so but in the next track we have like six cars battling with our track okay so that will be the more cool I guess <laughs> Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Neat. Yeah. So, uh, did you do you want it to be more like a realistic racing style game, like a Forza almost, or were you looking more to like a combat battle style, something like uh, uh, something closer to like a burnout style game, where you, it's more about taking out the other cars than beating them in a race? So, beating them in a race, like that was the main concept of this game. Okay. I want to make it like that, not like the uh, realistic game, because the the thing I have pitched you, mm -hmm. it's it's like that type of document I pitched you. So okay. I worked on that concept. I didn't like went on anywhere else. I didn't like let off, let go my focus from anywhere because, to be honest, being in a solo project, yeah. If I make my focus change again and again, again and again, I'm yeah. gonna mess up with my project. Yeah, yeah. You can't chase a whole bunch yeah. of different goals. You end yeah. up uh, getting lost for sure. Yeah. I yeah, know, excellent work. Yeah. Uh, it's a neat project and uh, definitely good job building this. Yeah. Thank, Thank you very you, much. Thank you.
All right, we're here with Shabam and Egg Runner. Uh, yeah, I am Shubham and I am 3D modeler and graphic designer. Mm -hmm. uh, let's start. This is my game. This VFX is done by like previous on VFX subject. Mm -hmm. So I use this VFX. Uh, other thing is I done all the models. Right. But like uh, UI UX stuff, uh, I use a free UI UX. Okay. So what games inspired this game? Uh, like uh, Endless Runner, Endless Subway Runner? Surfer, Subway and Surfer, nice. that stuff. Yeah. yeah. You're a big fan of Subway Surfer? Yeah, like in my childhood. I, like I'm solo developer, so that's why I done this game. Right. Yeah. Uh, why egg? Why an egg? Uh, I like egg, so that's like why eggs? I choose yeah. egg. I mean, who doesn't? They're delicious. Yeah. Yeah, cool. Let, let's see it again. What's the highest score you've gotten? One hundred? Yeah. That's pretty good. You gotta watch out for those axes. Is that a mushroom that fell over? What's your yeah. favorite model that you built for this game? Mushroom. The mushroom? Yeah, yeah. yeah the mushrooms are pretty good. Yeah. Those mushrooms are giant. It's almost like a fantasy world. Yeah. So I'm getting a little bit of a for like a, a farm vibe too with the uh, yeah yeah the, the the hay bales and the uh, the axes. It's generally a bad idea to leave your axes in the middle of the road. Yeah. Did you model the axe? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Like all all uh, all the models mm -hmm. I can done, but like this UI UX, uh, I free UI UX, uh, and the thing is like uh, I made a music. Right. Oh, uh, you made the music? Yeah. Oh, excellent. Yeah. Cool. Like it's solo, so that's why like mm -hmm. I use free. Yeah, nothing wrong stuff, with that. Yeah. Yeah, no, you put together an excellent uh, visual package. How does the uh, level generation work, or is it the... Uh, it's endless build? runner, so yeah. like, uh, no level. Okay. Like, yeah, it's, uh, is it automatically stitched together the more yeah. you play it? Yeah. Cool. Excellent. Yeah, that's it. Excellent. All right, well, thank you very much, Shabon. Yeah. Cool. Well, oh, thank you everybody for joining us. Yeah, excellent. It was an excellent showcase we had here today with some amazing games to witness. I want a round of applause for everyone yeah, here today in the Game everyone. Design Program. Congratulations. Oh yeah. Everybody pat yourself on the back. You did amazing work. What a great group of games. What a great showcase. It's amazing to see the hard work and effort and talent you put over the last couple months really show off and be out there on display. I mean, just to think, it was just a little idea way back in September, and now it's a full-fledged game that you can show off to other people. How amazing is that? You can play it. Your ideas made out in the world. So good work. Great job, team. Yeah. I'm very proud of the hard work you did so far. Or you did this year. So good on you. And uh, yeah, this has been an amazing event. I've had a lot of fun. Thank you very much for coming up here and talking about your games. And uh, yeah, well, can't wait to see where you go next. All right. Thank you. Perfect. Yeah.